She is from the Vyasna Human Rights Center, which is an NGO in Belarus. We are delighted to have you here with us. We will listen more about the relationships with the Council, which the Council of Europe is going to maintain with Belarusian NGOs. You have the floor, Natalia. Thank you so much. Nice to meet you all. And um, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to be here and um, to be invited into um, bring my contribution to this conference. And of course, I'd like to tell you some more general information about freedom of association in Belarus, but then go to the example of my organization and to show you how uh, repressions uh, against NGOs um, and uh, human rights defenders are in Belarus. Um, it's not a secret that situation with human rights in Belarus always was uh, rather difficult and authorities uh, didn't respect um, and uh, promote human rights. Uh, there are no systematic changes um, and um, but there were of course political repressions um, for last uh, almost 30 years. And um, on the level of um, national law, a lot of uh, freedoms were um, limited and restricted. Uh, for example, freedom of peaceful assemblies and freedom of association. But also on the practice, practical level, um, these rights are also very limited and people in Belarus can't exercise them. Uh, but after the elections in August 2020, uh, we faced these unprecedented repressions and uh, political uh, and uh, social crisis. And for today, the situation goes on the worse and worse every day. Um, in the last two years, the environment in Belarus, um, it was already extremely unfavorable for the exercise of freedom of association, including um, the right to freely establish, participate in, and freely withdraw from an association, worsened even more. Um, there has been an almost uh, complete removal of uh, freedom of uh, association in Belarus. Uh, the registration of new independent NGOs has been closed to, to suspend. Uh, hundreds of uh, NGOs are in the process of liquidation. Uh, and also citizens are forced to join pro-government organizations. And criminal cases have been opened against a number of um, civil activists and uh, NGO representatives uh, uh, via the abuse of uh, invest investigative powers. Um, Belarusian uh, citizens are subject to involuntary membership um, in pro-government public association known as uh, GONGOs. It was mentioned today, mentioned today earlier. And um, some of them are youth organizations, some of them are uh, like um, more traditional, for example, called uh, Belarus, and also trade unions um, that belong to the Federation of uh, Trade Unions uh, of Belarus. And um, according to public opinion poll, uh, about 25% of people participate in social, um, uh, about 25% uh, of people, they participate in social activities uh, under compulsion. Um, this investigation, this poll was done in uh, 2020. And, um, some people are uh, wanting to withdraw from these gongos or trade unions. They face uh, difficulties. Um, for example, that special forms must be filled in. Um, and um, these uh, state-supported uh, associations uh, bring their comparative uh, membership uh, of their social groups according to the um, next principle. For example, the Belarusian Society of Veterans states that it unites about uh, two and a half million uh, of people. And that means that all citizens uh, in Belarus um, of these uh, advanced ages are members of this organization. You can imagine it's impossible in democratic uh, country and a normal NGO. Uh, the same situation with the pioneer organizations for children and teenagers. Um, 
and other more. And also that it's important that in Belarus, uh, foreigners are still restricted uh, in terms of the possibilities to found association according to the law. And um, unregistered organizations are also forbidden and criminal liability for this was reintroduced uh, in Article 193 uh, of the Criminal Code. And uh, for today, so, um, Participating in their activities of uh, unregistered NGO, it's um, a criminal case for people. And um, there is uh, also a direct interference of the state in into NGO's activities, uh, including under the pretext of um, anti money laundering and the combating of uh, extremism. So authorities use these uh, possibilities in order to stop um, any uh, activities and NGOs, those who criticize uh, the regime of Lukashenko. Um, and um, this, of course, includes the forced uh, dissolution of the most respected and prominent NGOs, arrests of the organization leaders, and searches conducted at dozens of uh, NGOs. Um, consequently, many NGOs were forced uh, to relocate abroad uh, from Belarus for security reasons, um, as well as in order to continue their activities to be able to do it. Um, over the past years, our colleagues from um, Low Trend and OEC or EEC, uh, they counted that more than 850 organizations have been liquidated or are in the process of liquidation in Belarus. At the same time, um, the total number of NGOs uh, in country does not uh, exceed uh, 3,500. So you can imagine this great amount of organizations that are liquidated. Uh, and liquidation most often occurs by force, uh, by a court decision, but also self-liquidation uh, is also widespread. As it, and this decision on self-liquidation is made by organizations primarily due to their, um, to this unfavor legal environment, the general social political situation, and um, also often under pressure from the authorities. I personally know a lot of such cases when people are forced and uh, threatened by authorities, administration or police. And uh, of course you can imagine that today uh, Belarusian NGOs need partnership, cooperation and funding more than ever. Uh, they work a lot, uh, both with the society in Belarus and uh, with those who left Belarus for various reasons. Um, and when we go um, back to my organization, Human Rights Center, Vesna, uh, it was founded in 1996 and for today they're uh, one of the oldest and the biggest uh, organization, human rights organization in uh, Belarus. We have offices uh, in 16 cities around the country and um, but uh, it was founded in 1996, but in 2003 it was liquidated by the decision of Supreme, Supreme, Supreme Court. And until that time we work without registration on the territory of Belarus. And there are two decisions of uh, Human Rights Committee that there were a violation of the freedom of association and Belarusian authorities should renew the registration of organization. But uh, as you can imagine, nothing was done and there is no progress um, in this question. And during the whole 26 years history of uh, Vesna, uh, our staff and volunteers, they faced repressions in different forms. There were um, detentions, ar arrests, uh, fines, uh, searches. Some people were fired from work and expelled from university because of uh, do doing human rights activities. And in 2011, the leader of organization, Alex Bilyatsky, spent three years in prison on a fabricated political case, uh, allegedly for tax violations. And uh, 
last week on the 6th of September 2022, the verdict uh, was passed on the coordinator of uh, volunteers of Vesna, Marfa Robkova, um, and volunteer Andrei Chipiuk. Uh, this young uh, guys, uh, Marfa was sentenced to 15 years of prison and Andrei for six. And their crime uh, actually is uh, working uh, in a human rights organization, helping people and coordinating volunteers who do human rights activities. Um, and human rights defenders, um, when we speak about Vesna, um, a lot of um, our staff and volunteers left Belarus uh, in order to continue our activities in a um, secure place. Um, but of course, there are dozens of those who stay in Belarus and um, um, they face everyday threats and repressions. Um, for example, this week, my colleague Vladimir Tselipun from small Belarusian city Mozir, he received 10 days of arrest because of reposting on Facebook critical information about human rights in Belarus. And the situation is going worse. There would be new court trials. Um, um, and of course, I ask for your solidarity and pressure on Belarusian authorities, uh, extremely in this case. And uh, a total of seven Vesna members are now under arrest of criminal charges. And behind bars is the chairman of the organization, vice president and legal coordinator. Um, they are accused of uh, not registering the organization and not becoming tax registered and not, not paying taxes. Um, so I think this is the uh, height of uh, cynicism from Belarusian authorities to do it like this. And of course, in addition, during their um, arrest, they face uh, appalling conditions. Uh, for example, shower once a week, uh, only one hour a walk a day, uh, overcrowded cells, uh, poor food, uh, lack of uh, sunlight and lack of uh, qualified medical care. Um, but despite the repressions, uh, we continue our work. I mean, the whole um, civil society, NGOs uh, of Belarus, and of course, human rights uh, organizations. Um, and uh, I kindly ask uh, everyone to write a postcard of uh, solidarity to my colleagues, human rights defenders in Belarus. You can easily do it from any uh, country or do it online. The whole information is presented on our website. You can find easily the addresses. Uh, as I mentioned, there are seven human rights defenders uh, arrested, but more than 1,300 political prisoners also are in Belarus uh, today. And uh, I think that today solidarity is uh, extremely important uh, and uh, it's our weapon of support. Uh, thank you.